Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatore. So, what I want to talk about today is one of the issues with cutting with this sort of weapon. So, this is a winged spear, um, supposedly of the Viking era uh, sort of design, but we do find spears like this, winged spears in other words, used right the way through the Middle Ages. Okay, so you can see them in Fiore's manuscript. And ultimately you could say they may be related to partisans that we find in the 16th, 17th centuries. Um, and possibly ultimately also to the spontoon which continues right the way through to the 19th century. Um, but one of the issues with cutting with these is how we think about cutting. So now whilst clearly any polearm can be swung, okay, like this, and you could deliver quite a lot of force to the target by swinging through the target with the pole weapon. Okay, so you can do that with this type of spear, but there are two main issues um, that prevent that from being as effective as if I pick up this weapon, uh, something like with the Danax. Okay, now those two main issues are firstly edge alignment and secondly rigidity. Okay, now there are ways that you can mitigate those things, so let's have a look at why those are two issues with the winged spear or partisan. So first of all, rigidity. Well, the fact is, this is a long, relatively narrow shaft, so it has flex to it. The problem, therefore, is when you impact with a target, there is always, you lose a lot of the energy to impacting on the target to the flex in the shaft, as it were. Okay, with the um, axe, the axe has a broader shaft than the spear because it doesn't need to be so long, so you can make it thicker, essentially. But there is another reason why the flex is a problem, and that's related to the edge alignment issue. So, if you look at a Dane axe, the easiest way is probably to look at the head. You will see, if I can't close the camera there, you will see that the head is not, um, shall we say, it's not cylindrical, okay? It's not round. So, um, therefore, the shaft has a, um, a kind of um, oval cross-section, or sometimes even rectangular on other types of uh, pole weapon, with the result that you can index the edge. I always know which direction the edge is pointing in, just uh, even in one hand or two hands, okay? So I can feel which direction the edge is moving in at any one point, uh, because I can feel it in my hands. In addition to that, with this type of um, implement, you'll see that it has a, a large blade on it, okay, which obviously helps with feeling which direction the edge is pointing in. If I let go of the weapon, you will notice that the edge falls downwards. So therefore, I can always tell which direction the edge is in in my hand because that's the direction I can feel gravity taking the edge of, of the weapon and leading with the weapon. Those two things coupled together, the fact that we've got something projecting out of the side, if I move the weapon around like this, I can feel rotational inertia, so I feel resistance to it wanting to turn. If I grab the spear, I can spin it around easily like this, uh, because it's narrow. It doesn't project a lot out to the side. It's got little wings, but not very much. I can easily do that, easily spin the spear around. Okay, I can't do that oh, very easily to an axe without building up some inertia, building up some momentum to the blade, and then it swings around uh, with that sort of counterweight, as it were, pendulum type weight uh, swinging itself around. So I can feel which direction the edge is pointing in from that, and I can also feel it in my hands. Now, I mentioned rigidity. These two things are connected, of course, because the shaft is not round, it is oval in this case, and therefore it's a lot more rigid in the plane of striking. If I'm striking something in this way, okay, then when I meet it, it is, in literal terms, it will flex a bit, but it's not going to flex very much because it is oval and not round. The round shaft, however, will bend, and even just bending it against my knee, I can see that. Even when you swing the thing, you actually get an effect. You feel a slight effect in your hand, depends on the thickness and the stiffness of the wood. But you even feel when you start to swing this, it drags behind a bit, it flexes a bit. Now I do know that in some Chinese staff systems, 
these very flexible shafts are actually used to accelerate the tip. So you can, there are techniques where if you have a very flexible shaft, almost like a whip, as you start to push, it lags behind and then you can stop and whip it forward. But that's not really applicable to this type of spin. So essentially, there are two main issues with doing a chop with a spear. One is rigidity and the second is edge alignment. You can't feel the edge alignment and also because of the round shaft, um, there's not so much rigidity in the shaft. So how do you mitigate those factors? Well, first of all, these wings, as I mentioned before, have a small mitigating factor because they do give you some directional um, sense of inertia. So when you move the blade around in this plane, you can feel slightly uh, the, uh, those, the tips of those two wings. And the bigger the wings are, so if we get into something like a, a speetum, for example, or um, trident-like things, where they uh, project out further, you can actually feel the edge alignment more. So don't only think about those as objects to maybe strike with, or hook with, or push with, or parry with, but also they help you with the edge alignment. And the other way you can mitigate it is by not having a round shaft, by having a rectangular or hexagonal or octagonal shaft. If you've got planes that you can feel in your hand, then very often you can uh, feel the edge a bit better. And in fact, if we start to look at the partisan, uh, and we know that the partisan was indeed used for these big sort of chopping motions um, sometimes, then partisans usually have quite thick shafts, which increases rigidity, and they often have octagonal or hexagonal shafts as well. Um, things like halberds and bills very often have rectangular shafts, um, or sometimes the, a rectangle with the edges just chamfered off, the corners chamfered off to make a, an octagon, but they're basically rectangular. So those two things really help with um, chopping power. But the final thing I want to say is when you think about cutting with these weapons, we should remember that they are predominantly still thrusting weapons, okay? They're designed to be able to thrust, either sliding the hand or like that, or uh, not sliding the hand like that. They are predominantly thrusting weapons. And when they give a cut, very often it won't be a big cut like you would have with the axe but it might be a little cut like this, a short chop, or it might be a push cut or a pull cut. So you don't necessarily have to worry so much about edge alignment as you do if you were swinging the weapon, as if I was using a Dane axe, for example, okay, which you want to move like this. Instead, with this weapon, it might be that you're predominantly using, using the point, okay? You're using the point like this, and then you're just doing little cuts like that, almost pull cuts or raking cuts. So to summarize, the ways that we cut with um, spears, winged spears, hewing spears, these sorts of long bladed edge spears, um, is in many circumstances different to how we'd necessarily cut with something like an ax or a glaive or a bill or a halberd. That being said, there are some ways that we can make cuts with these weapons more effective. One of those is of course to have a thicker shaft and one of the others is to have a shaft where we can index the edge so not have it round but have it oval, octagonal, rectangular etc. And the final way is to have some design to the head for example as we find with partisans or um, certain other types of winged spear like this and ones with even bigger wings where when you move the um, weapon around its axis like this, you can actually feel the edge alignment in a similar way, obviously to a lesser degree, but in a similar way to how we feel it with the axe, or indeed how you often feel it with things like curved swords or a halberd where you have projecting blades um, out of the uh, axis of the shaft. Anyway, I hope that's been uh, somewhat interesting and useful. I'll talk a lot more about pole arms now that I have, uh, the weather's nice and I've got a bit more space to move around. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please give me a subscribe and click that bell so you get notifications of new videos. And give me a like if you found this video interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, if you'd like me to look at any other particular pole arms, obviously I don't own all the pole arms, but I do own some, uh, then give a comment below. What would you like me to see me talk about? And also, I'm very happy to talk more about spears, and I will be doing so. Are there any specific questions you have about spears that you'd like me to address on Scholar Gladiatoria channel. 
Thanks for watching folks and I'll see you really soon for another video. Cheers. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.